Oh, this guy's harassing me. Now at six, a phone call to mom earns a hotel guest a visit from police. And he says it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't black. And so people are asking what's going on with the OHSU tram. This weeks after a piece fell from it, hit a woman below. New emails now that KGW has uncovered revealing a history of issues. And Merry Christmas, Oregon Ducks. Quarterback Justin Herbert's big decision about his future with the team. And good evening. Thanks so much for being with us. Our top story, a Portland hotel accused of racial profiling and videos of the ordeal going viral. Yeah, this actually happened on Sunday night, but you might have already seen Jermaine Massey's Instagram posts. He filmed, as he says, a security guard at the Portland Doubletree Hotel. There's that guard called him a safety threat, accused him of trespassing and then called the police. To be clear, Massey was a guest at the Doubletree and he told that guard that. He says he even had a key card on him. Massey is from Kent, Washington, and he was in town here for Sunday's Travis Scott concert at the Moda Center. He wrote he stopped in the lobby to call his mom, and minutes later, this happened. You came over here because I was taking a phone call in the area where no one was. I had a family emergency, and I was taking a phone call, and this guy's harassing me. From my point of view, um, it had to be my race because there were other patrons in the lobby at the time. None of them were questioned about if they were staying there at the hotel or not, but I was. Now, that second video right there was posted from a different hotel, and that's because police confirmed staff at the Doubletree ordered Massey to get his things and leave. He wasn't arrested and he wasn't charged, and he has not responded to interview requests. The Doubletree's general manager, though, sent KGW a statement calling the incident likely a misunderstanding, adding, quote, we are sorry that this matter ended the way it did. We are a place of public accommodation and do not discriminate against any individuals or groups. We have reached out to the guest in order to resolve this matter. Developing now, a man injured in a crash last week on I-205 has died. 21-year-old Calvin Bildemeyer passed away just yesterday. Portland police say he was a passenger in a car that rammed into a construction vehicle near the Stark Street Street overpass. The driver, 25-year-old Rachel Banks, has been charged with driving under the influence and reckless driving. Well, a man accused of a carjacking appeared in court this afternoon. 23-year-old Mark Fernandez pleaded not guilty to several charges. Police say he carjacked a minivan on Monday near the food carts at 10th and Washington downtown. Officers then spotted him driving that same van yesterday morning. They chased him down and arrested him in northeast Portland. Police also say they found a replica handgun in the minivan, which they think he used during that carjacking. So uh, the weather, uh, it held off for Christmas, no rain, uh, but it came back today with a vengeance. Got a live look right now downtown. This is our Rose City, uh, City Sky Cam. Meteorologist Chris McGinnis joins us from the Weather Center in tonight. Uh, how long is this rain sticking around? What do we think? You know, it's starting to break up, actually. So I think we've kind of seen the lion's share of the rain that we're going to see with this event. Three tenths of an inch, by the way, in the KGW rain bucket up on the roof. That said, we still have a little smattering of green on the map. Tiger getting a little wet. Sunnyside, Clackamas, Damascus. You've got some rain showers still falling out towards Sandy and Troutdale snow levels in the Cascades, by the way, up around 2,500 to 3,000 feet. So travel over the passes. We've been watching those cameras all afternoon and they are busy, but the roads are manageable if you're prepared, of course, for that type of driving. Driving, I should say. Uh, over the last three hours, we can see the progress that the rain and the snow has made here. And uh, we even had a few lightning strikes reported here across portions of Tillamook and Clatsop County, right there and then right there, and even some down towards uh, the Eugene area as well as that uh, upper level energy passed overhead. Now, with that being said, that's the strongest part of the storm. It's now lifting its way up over the Cascades, and I expect the showers to continue diminishing this evening. Future cast backs that up as we roll the clock on our computer model through midnight. Still can't rule out a shower or two in the valley overnight early tomorrow morning, but we should then start a drying trend as we head into Thursday afternoon. Right now we are, uh, well, we're dark. It's cloudy. It's 44 last check at the airport. Your full forecast coming up. It's just a few minutes, guys. All right, Chris, sounds good. Thank you. In the meantime, new emails obtained by KGW reveal a history of issues with the aerial tram at OHSU. It stems from, from an incident that seemed like a one in a million type yeah, of thing. Definitely. It was back on December 4th when a panel fell from the tram and hit a woman below. But today we're learning that the panels may have actually come loose before, twice before. KGW's Devin Haskins has been following the story for us. He's live near the tram in southwest Portland. Devin.
Yeah, it happened twice before the latest one happening in 2014, and that's in 12 years of operation. Now, the latest or the panels have a safety measure in place to prevent these from falling to the ground. And on December 4th, those safety measures failed. Over 100 pages of emails were released detailing the hours following the December 4th incident. In the first page, a Peabot official notes this wasn't the first time they've had issues, noting the panels had come loose before. In the previous two cases, the safety, uh, the safety latches, because there's a carabiner and then there's a wire tether, uh, they, they functioned and so the panel didn't come off. Um, so of course it's always a concern, but at the same time in you know, 12 years of operation, it's only happened twice. This is the panel that hit a woman on the head while she was walking across this bridge. She only had minor injuries and refused treatment. Peabot says the top of the tram is made up of four panels, two big ones and two small ones. It was one of the big ones, a 35 foot square piece of metal that fell earlier this month. The tram was immediately shut down and inspected. Immediately afterwards, they looked at the uh, they looked at the carabiners and the tethers. They strengthened them so they put in thicker wires, thicker carabiners. But for those that use the tram often, the thought of another piece coming loose or worse falling isn't much of a concern. I feel like since it's happened a couple times, I think that they're definitely going to figure out what's going on and make sure they get that dialed in. I'm sure that now that, that somebody has been injured, they're going to take it a little more seriously and and probably like put an end to that. Now back to those emails, an internal discussion of how to handle the incident. Due to an influx of concern from OHSU employees, they released an internal statement. We did have a bulletin. OHSU did share this information with us and let us know what had happened. And for a tour spot that has given over half a million rides to employees, patients and tourists, there were no plans to release a statement to the public unless requested by the media. The tram has two inspections done annually, one surprise and one scheduled. There was an inspection done actually a couple weeks before this latest incident, citing no safety concerns. The latest incident, well, that report will be released sometime next month. Back to you. So you have three incidents, you have a safety uh, uh, inspection done, and then mm -hmm. another incident happened. So it uh, looks like this one's not over. Uh, we'll talk to you later probably about this one again, Devin. Thank you for the report tonight. We also want to talk about the federal shutdown. It's continuing, and it is, of course, having an effect right here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, just like a lot of other parts of the country, certain offices are closed. And as KGW's Art Edwards found out, no one from the National Park Service is on duty right now at Fort Vancouver. You can come out here to Fort Vancouver and walk around on the grounds, take a look at everything out here. But the buildings and the offices are all going to be closed because of the federal shutdown. That means there's not going to be anyone around to answer any of your questions. There are signs posted all over Fort Vancouver letting visitors know of the federal shutdown. The signs warn there will be no National Park Service provided visitor services, such as restrooms, trash collection, or even road maintenance. At Fort Vancouver, that means the visitor center is closed, along with the fort itself and also the Pearson Air Museum. There are other federal offices closed around here as well. The USDA office in Portland and the IRS office there. We caught up with one guy who found some information when he showed up at a scheduled appointment at the IRS office. That the government had closed down an appointment that I had set up a week ago uh, for uh, the IRS to take a look at some papers. There are nine federal agencies total that have had their funding cut off. Lawmakers are due to return from the Christmas holiday this week and begin to work on a new budget. Reporting from Vancouver, Art Edwards, KGW News. And we'll have much more on the government shutdown in our second half hour, along with details of President Trump's surprise visit to Iraq today to visit the troops. Ducks fans, good to be you. Turned out to be a pretty merry Christmas for the Oregon Ducks. Quarterback Justin Herbert says he is going to be back. He's going to return for his senior season, releasing a statement this morning saying, quote, the University of Oregon has been a special place to me for as long as I can remember. Herbert had been projected as one of the top quarterbacks in the 2019 NFL draft. He could have gone and made millions. Instead, he's sticking around. He, of course, is going to take the field next week against Michigan State for the Red Box Bowl. He still has some time to make millions eventually. Yeah, he'll, he'll get there. All right, good. Well, a Portland man accomplished a pretty amazing feat. He became the first person ever to cross Antarctica 
by himself without assistance. It's amazing. He, he, um, what have we done lately? Not this. Uh, he, and he did this <laughs> detailed uh, uh, kind of catalog of his journey on Instagram. You got some of the posts right here. Oh, cool. He made uh, this is a 932 mile journey he made in just 52 days. He was hauling his supplies on that sled. You see there the yellow kind of sled that yeah. he was dragging at the whole way. He finished the final 77 miles in just one go. Now, other people have made this trip before, but they had used kites that helped propel them forward. And it's a tough story for me to read because uh, the other night I took an Uber four blocks downtown. <laughs> I took an elevator one story. The, oh, wow. We're doing so, yeah. Great. And then this guy's walking across the arc. But how cool is it that he's from right here in our backyard? It's uh -huh. awesome. Congrats to him. When he gets home, we got to get him in the studio. I got to talk to this guy. So Learn cool. from him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell my Uber story. So uh, <laughs> trying to make it right. A Medford girl receiving a special gift months after someone stole her favorite toy from her family's porch. Yeah, that is a sweet story. And it's got a pretty intimidating name, but fear not. We'll tell you when you can feast your eyes on the upcoming, wait for it, Super Blood Wolf Moon.